Aloha and welcome to the 2023 Capstone Symposium. My name is Amanda Imperato and I am a candidate for the Master's in Social Work here at HPU. Today I will be discussing military sexual assault and the newest changes in the reporting system. My research focused on service members' perspectives of this policy change and the effectiveness of the change in reporting sexual assault. So before I begin to discuss my study, I wanted to acknowledge that April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. This is important to discuss as many have experienced sexual assault within the military and this research will help bring more awareness to this topic. That's the reason why I'm wearing teal today. So please take a few moments to review my abstract. You guys can pause the video if you need to. Thank you for reviewing and welcome back. I'm going to go to the next slide. So introduction. Throughout this presentation, I will be discussing barriers to reporting military sexual assault, past the passing of S-1605, and how it will impact reporting, the effectiveness of the policy based on active duty viewpoints, and the implications of these findings for future social workers. So in the slide, this is a DOD chart. It's from a study from 2021. It shows the percentage, percentages of active duty members who have reported sexual assault. So it shows about one in five service members have reported sexual assault in 2021. It shows 8.4% active duty women and 1.5% of males have reported sexual assault. Um, if you want to look deeper into the chart, you can pause the video. It breaks it down more into each separate branch of the military, which is Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force. So barriers to reporting. Um, the U.S. military has traditionally been a male dominated with women representing the minority of military members, particularly at leadership levels. So military culture is often characterized by hypermasculinity, which reflects upon the hostile ad toward attitude towards women and rape myth acceptance. This contributes to the rates of sexual violence and barriers to disclosure. Research has found barriers to reporting sexual assault, which includes receiving negative career consequences, fear of retaliation, fear of receiving opposing reaction to disclosure, um, and also they are less likely to report if the perpetrator is associated with the reporting commander, which an example is if there is a friendship between the commander and the perpetrator. And there also is a fear of being seen as weak for reporting the incident. So the purpose of this research was to understand active duty service members' awareness of policy 1605, which it implemented a change removing the legal responsibility of the chain of command to persecute sexual assault and criminal activities. This research also analyzes active duty service members' perspectives on the effectiveness of this policy change. So in this um, slide, it breaks it down on the specific question I asked within the questionnaire. Um, the questionnaire was accessible through Google Forms, and I also did a lot of recruitment through Instagram and Facebook. So data analysis. A qualitative content analysis was performed to analyze the open-ended data that was collected during this research, all the data from the questionnaires were reviewed and sorted into context areas pertaining to the participants' responses. Coding was analyzed as well as um, being analyzed through in vivo. Participants. So in the graph above, it shows that there was a total of 18 participants within the questionnaire. Um, you guys can pause the video for a little bit just to analyze the demographics a little further. So results. Prior to being informed of this policy, 12 participants were not aware of this major policy change, while six participants were aware of this policy change. When asked about their understanding of the current process for reporting within their branch, the theme that was founded was unrestricted and restricted reportings. So just to break it down a little further, restricted allows you to receive legal advice, medical and advocacy services, but does not trigger an investigation. So your identity remains private. But with unrestricted, you get everything the same, except that there is an investigation, as well as your identity is now um, known by the chain of command. So that's what it is. Regarding this policy's impact on the elimination of barriers, 
Um, seven participants felt that the change will eliminate the barriers. One participant was unsure and 10 participants felt that this policy change would eliminate barriers. Overall themes that emerged included the feelings of comfort, belief, scared as shown in the word cloud. Some of the responses on the effectiveness of eliminating barriers included um, like knowing situations, investigations, involvement, a lot of flaws came up too as well. So right here, it talks about the different responses that a lot of the participants included. One of them focuses on the yes and why this um, new change would be effective. The other two focus more on the no. I know one of the participants included in the RNs expressed that they felt that it was a way to um, the military kind of just checked off the box and just wanted it to appease the public. So in conclusion, the results of this study have shown, the results of this study have shown that even with this major change in the reporting system, active duty members felt that this change would not be effectively impacting barriers to reporting military sexual assault. But though commanders are no longer responsible for the prosecution, Participants still felt the feel of appraisal, reprisal would continue to be persistent barriers. So there was a continued theme of a lot of distrust um, when it came to the participants' response, response, and they felt more comfortable with relying on outside parties rather than internal parties when it comes to reporting. So limitations. So a small sample size was accounted for in the study and provided limited responses from all six branches. The majority of participants were from the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. Um, I was hoping to get an increase of different military branches perspectives, but that may be a good possibility for future research. Um, also with participants, none of them were of SHARP or SAPER representatives, which could have provided a different outlook on this policies. Um, review as well as their experience with working directly with victims of sexual assault. So implications. The study has shown that not many military members trust the reporting process and the chain of command. Further research has shown should evaluate what needs to be changed in order for service members to feel supported when reporting sexual assault. Perhaps once the bill has been fully operational, Service members experience the next prosecution process. There may be a shift towards increased trust within the DOD sexual assault reporting. So the implications of these findings are still unclear, but the future of social workers working with victims and survivors will be interesting to oversee. So these are my references. Mahalo for listening. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me. My information is at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.